أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters in Islam this is your brother Hanwa Ali uh, here on Conscious Reminders جزاكم الله خير for tuning in for those of you who come to watch this video um, I wanted to talk about a topic that has been bothering me for quite a while and I don't think I've addressed it here on this channel uh, subhanallah and it's basically about it's about marriage <laughs> And it, but it's more it's specifically about how brothers and sisters are so picky to such an ex, to such a specific extent that they end up staying single for a very long time. Okay, lacking in tawakkul in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, lacking in trust in Him that you know He will take care of their affairs. Okay, so where am I? What am I getting at? Subhanallah. There's no haram. Or halal in this. This is not me refuting anything or anyone. Subhanallah. It is it is in fact in our sunnah to choose someone with certain qualities, the best qualities, inshallah. So we should be picky. What I'm talking about is these ultra, subhanallah, like super picky people. Uh, subhanallah. And I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, even thinking about perhaps how I'm how I am as well with myself and how I was before. Uh, subhanallah. You know. I get brothers sometimes who are like, oh man, you know, you know, that sister there, she's she's beautiful, man, but she's not my type. And that worries me sometimes because like he found attraction in the sister. Like, and it's not haram, like if you find someone attractive, it's not like, oh stuff for Allah, you found her attractive. Look, we're not gay, okay? You know what I mean? Like we is we have a natural inclination to be attracted to the opposite gender. So I'm like, but Achi, you found her attractive, what's the problem? Okay, subhanallah, like you, you, you're halfway past the hurdle, like you're, you're halfway there, subhanallah. What's, what's stopping you from, you know, inquiring to her, um, to her, to her wali about her for, for marriage? And you would hear things like, oh man, I got, you know, I got this, this is the type of girl I want. And, you know, she's got to be like this, and she's got to be like that. And, she, and, you know, even though I am attracted to that sister that I just saw, but she's just not like this and like that of what I'm looking for. SubhanAllah. And, I, and then I got to thinking about it, SubhanAllah. And I was thinking about the psychology behind it, SubhanAllah, looking at, you know, society and so forth. And I, you know, I was just thinking, SubhanAllah, I was thinking it could be because because we have too much choice. Okay, now some of you might be like, too much choice? Like some sisters might be like, no, I, there's just not enough good brothers around, right? And some brothers might be like, there's just not enough good sisters. Believe me, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that we are surrounded by so many people. Like say for example, you lived in a village, right? A village of what, say, Bismillah, uh, 500 people. Allahumma uh, salli wa sallam ala Sayyid Muhammad. So you, you live in a village of 500 people, Almost everyone knows everyone, right? Every family knows each family. We know, you know the standards of the men and the women. You know what the limits are. You know like how attractive a man will be and, and his ability and his, his, his character and his iman. So you know realistically like what you can get your hands on, subhanAllah, right? So you're not gonna you know, hurt your, your mind and your heart by thinking, well, I'm looking for this guy and this, something that doesn't exist in the plane or field of where you are, okay? Because you're not, you don't have the money or the means or the ability to travel halfway around the world to find that exotic thing that your mind is conjured up. 2018, 21st century, metropolitan city in the West, you have millions of people living per city, okay? And then you have the internet where you have billions of people who are on the internet. You have so much choice. You have, like, let's say for the system, you have, Indian men, you have South American men, you have American men, you have Western, uh, like European men, you have Arab men, you've got black men, you've got Jamaican men, you got, you know, um, subhanAllah, Chinese men, Malaysian men, Australian men, Aborigine men, Native American men, you've got so many. And in each of, of, of those ethnicities, you have an array of choices. SubhanAllah, already my head hurts. <laughs> I feel sorry for sisters. And what happens is that this opens a door for the shaitan, again, this is my opinion, to manipulate you and make it so difficult for you to make a choice and to lack tawakkul and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you just end up يعني, floating around the internet, never making a choice. 
You know, some people would say, SubhanAllah, well, you know, variety is good because you have more choice to make a choice. No, in fact, you, more choice leads to no choice. Uh, if you went to a restaurant and they had a menu that had a thousand meals, my God, that would be hard. That would be so hard to be, you're like, well, but what's good? You know, I don't know what's good. I can, I mean, I, I recognize, I recognize, uh, I don't know, meal number 57, you know, I mean, I've tasted that before, but like there's, wow, what's this meal number 122, you know? Like, what's that like? I've never tried that before. I mean, who's got a thousand days to try a, a thousand dishes, which cost like, I don't know, 10 pounds or something. The point I'm trying to say is, when there's too much choice, when your mind and your heart is bombarded by so many things, it becomes difficult to make a choice, right? And then add on top of that, SubhanAllah, the indecisiveness, of how our community has become, our Muslim community, and also, subhanAllah, the specificness of what you're looking for, uh, subhanAllah. Uh, like, like, look, I'll, I'll give you a beautiful example. You've got Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Khadija radiallahu anha. We all know this is the ultimate love story. Um, but you have to understand the, 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 the environment that they lived in, you know, the, the go-to woman, the, the woman that was most sought after was a beautiful, young, virgin, you know, healthy, because you see health in her, because she's young, she's playful, she'll give birth to you. Khadija radiallahu not that, that she wasn't desirable, many men desired her, subhanAllah, she was intelligent, she was, from, from what I've known, she's beautiful, she's wealthy, subhanAllah, she had a very high status, very good lineage, subhanAllah, but she was much older than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And she had loads of miscarriages, subhanAllah. So, um, uh, due to her age, and Allah knows best what other reasons are as well. I'm just trying to say that even though in a, in a society, you know, uh, that saw one type of thing that was very attractive, subhanAllah, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam found his ultimate love in a woman that wasn't necessarily in the category of what was deemed as absolutely, you know, that is the pinnacle of what is, you should be you should be taking uh, you should be looking for subhanallah the point is that you may you have your own perception of what is perfect you know she, she's got to be like she's got to have these curves and she's got to be her hair is gonna because I, I hear brothers are like oh man i need the sister's gonna have this skin and long hair and you know lips like this and nose like that and her eyes are got to be like this and you know, and I'm just like, whoa, subhanAllah. Who is the creator, you or Allah? Yeah, I mean, subhanAllah, yani, like, it's almost like they're trying to, you know, like, like give me some clay, I'm gonna make something. Astaghfirullah al-Azim, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim, bismillah rahim Where's like, where's the trust in Allah? Why can't you just go to Allah and say, Ya Allah, you know what is best, you know? I, you know me, you know my inclinations, Ya Rabbil Alameen, you know my limits, SubhanAllah. I want a woman who's beautiful. I want a woman that's like this and like, like, like that. And yani, wh and whatever you bring for me, I'll accept it, inshallah. Because Allah, even if like, a woman comes to you and she may not be see deemed as the pinnacle of what that's you, the society you live in, you know, perfect type of woman, Allah will put perfection between both of you. He will put love and beauty and tranquility between both of you. You will, yani, you can't make that yourself. That's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you limit yourself, if you're like, nah, 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 she's not, she's not like this or he's not like that, yeah, that, that, yani you're not put placing to work on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah. So ease up on your hardcore specifications. Sure, have standards. Everyone needs to have standards, subhanAllah. Like me, I would, it, this is my standard. I would never marry a woman who smokes. I hate cigarettes. It's haram, obviously, but there are many sisters who smoke. There are many sisters who smoke, they know it's haram, and they, see, and they are begging Allah to help them uh, stop smoking. But I wouldn't marry a sister who smokes. That's just me, subhanAllah. Um, and uh, amongst many other lists, I don't want to go through because I don't want this to turn this into a matrimonial um, uh, thing or whatever, but it's just to talk about this thing where, yeah, I mean, ease up, subhanAllah, ease up on this sort of ultra, specification of what it is that you're looking for not that Allah can't provide that he can but be realistic be realistic of your surrounding if you live in a community of I don't know say you live in a community of just Arabs right and you know you can't travel out to another country but you're like I but I want I really want I don't know I really want a blonde European woman for example 
come on, be realistic. Be honestly realistic, subhanAllah. Marry from your community. Marry from what Allah has blessed, blessed, and I emphasize on the words blessed, all right? Because every Muslim woman is a blessing in our community, alhamdulillah. May Allah preserve them all, I mean. And every Muslim man in our community is a blessing to the women of our community. I mean, Ya Rabbi, because, yani, may Allah bless them too, Ya Rabbi. Uh, I mean, Ya Rabbi, I mean. Subhanallah, sometimes you have something that's good and it's right in front of you, but you're so blind, you just can't see it. Um, and it, it, it really, uh, it really does uh, sort of dishearten me and, and upset me that this is the case, subhanAllah. Because someone is looking, like for example, you know, you, you have the cliche, you no, know, he's, he's got to have like this crazy degree, he's got to have th th this X amount of money, he's got to have a house, he's got to have a car, he's got to be like, you know, got to have the pecs, the muscles, or he's got to have, I don't, Allah must understand what it is that women are looking for. I was speaking to, and I, I get this a lot from some brothers, uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but I don't hear, I didn't hear this once or twice. I hear this a lot, okay? One of the many reasons why a lot of brothers are reluctant to marry divorcees and widowed sisters, especially sisters who have children. And I, I pray that I haven't crossed, I don't cross any line by saying this, inshallah. And may Allah forgive me in advance. And if I do, please let me know in a comment and I'll never talk about it again um, in any of my videos. Uh, if it's too, if it's if the language is too crude or whatever, but some brothers they feel they physically can't size up in the bedroom department to a woman who's already given birth. Now I'm not going to go too far as to any details. If you understand what I'm talking about, then you'll understand. Alhamdulillah. Now some women might laugh listening to me say this and be like, "What kind of stupidness is that? Like, oh my God, this guy's not a man." Blah blah blah. Wallahi, this is a big issue for a lot of brothers. And it is, unfortunately, it is due to the shaitan doing a lot of waswasa, uh, lack of tawakkul in, in many of us, subhanAllah. Nobody is perfect, subhanAllah. You know the shaitan, he doesn't steal. The shaitan is like a thief, right? And the thief doesn't steal from an empty house. And we live in a society where, we're, you know, we're, where we're, we are forced to size ourselves up to things. You know, everything is over, overly sexualized. Everything we watch, cartoons, TV shows, movies, adverts, subhanAllah, everything in the newspaper, in the magazines, hasbunallah uh, al-wakil. And don't forget, the internet is littered with porn. Like, you don't even need to go to a porn site and, you know, bam, like a little porn ad pops up in a website that you, uh, you've you clicked on. And, you know, and porn in itself, unfortunately, Yani, it becomes a peer pressure for a lot of brothers thinking, oh man, I gotta be like this. And for women, like, I gotta be this shape. I gotta behave, I gotta, you know, um, I gotta behave like this in the bedroom department and stuff like that. That's got nothing to do with the reality of, of, uh, of relationships, subhanAllah. And this is unfortunately, this is the, due to, to the weakness in our hearts and the, the door has been opened for the shaitan to come in and to do waswasa, to, to manipulate us and our thoughts. Wallahi, and I say wallahi, uh, and I don't say wallahi so carelessly, and you, as you know, I've mentioned many times in many, many of my other videos that wallahi is a very heavy word. Um, a woman can give birth a hundred times. If Allah, if you have to work with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is to the brothers, again, I say wallahi, he will make your, he will make your relation with her more beautiful than, a, than if you were with if you were with a, a virgin sister. Wallah al this is having tawakkul in Allah SWT because there's nothing that Allah SWT can't achieve. But if you go into a relationship with complete lack of tawakkul in Allah SWT, you know, you're like, oh man, man, I'm not gonna be able to perform, I'm not gonna be able to do this, and whatever, subhanAllah, because you know the sister has rights over the brother, you know, she wants to be pleased by him, he wants to be pleased by her, and so forth. SubhanAllah, this is one of the fears that brothers have, and I'm, I'm, I don't know about sisters, I don't, no sisters ever talk to me about, yani, if she has any sort of any um, insecurities about being, giving birth to, uh, to children and then having to remarry, SubhanAllah. But what I'm trying to say to the brothers is, Allahi, and you fear Allah and don't fear the shaitan because the shaitan is, is means he has no uh, good intentions for you okay and Allah wants all the best for us okay there is no hadith there's no ayah in the Quran that says don't marry uh, a divorcee don't marry with the, the widower don't marry someone who's given birth because you're not gonna enjoy it okay there is no such thing okay 
in fact it's encouraged subhanallah so i just wanted to add this subhanallah because some brothers talk about it and i do i try to comfort them and say to them listen allah al-azim this is the shaitan doing waswasa in your head doing waswasa in your heart uh, there's no such thing uh, as this nonsense subhanallah Uh, as this nonsense subhanallah yes uh, it is a reality that we live in today subhanallah but if you believe in Allah Allah we don't see him he's you know he's not in front of us or whatever but it's, it's all we have is our tawakkul right if you have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he'll make everything beautiful for you so before I get too sidetracked onto that topic just wanted to go back please my brothers and sisters in Islam it's just again this is again this is my opinion my advice subhanallah don't tie yourself down to such a, a, a super specific specification of um, the type of spouse that you're looking for. Uh, be easy. Uh, place your tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> if you feel like you're too old to get married, don't be afraid. Who, who are you to say that no one can give you love? I remember there was a, uh, there was a German man. Uh, he was a reva at Islam. When I used to be on Facebook and he used to cry all the time on Facebook. He would be like, oh man, no. He's like, I think he was like 60 something. He was in his 60s. And he, he's like, oh, who's gonna marry me? You know, I don't really have much money and I'm an old man. And you know, I, like he, he doesn't, I don't think he had any kids and he really just wanted to get married to a good sister. And he used to cry about it all the time. And there was this one time he just disappeared from Facebook, right? For like a whole month. And suddenly he came back. And his first post was, Alhamdulillah, I got married. Allahu Akbar, SubhanAllah. And he had this picture of him and his, and his wife. Um, I don't advise anyone to post your picture of your spouse online uh, to protect yourself uh, from people's end. And obviously, you, you know, you should have some ghira. But he posted a picture of him and his wife and he was so happy. Like, I've never seen him smile in any of his pictures except that picture, SubhanAllah. And Allahumma barik lahum. May Allah bless them and bless their marriage. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. And I would really want you to have hope. There's another brother as well, subhanAllah. Because a lot of people, I'm going to mention his story as well. There's a lot of people who feel like, oh, I'm not healthy enough. I might be overweight or something like that. I'm like, you know, no, who's going to find me attractive? I'm never going to get married. I hear a lot of brothers say this. There was this one brother. He's probably watching this video. And I love him for the sake of Allah. The kindest, sweetest, most generous uh, one of the most generous people I've ever met, subhanAllah. And he would get really anxious and he would cry about how like, man, I'm too overweight, nobody's gonna, you know, who's gonna marry me? I'm not, I'm not gonna find a wife. And, he, and he's, he's, he actively tries to look, he goes on all these websites to look and, uh, and, and you know what? Bismillah. Allah blessed him with a wife, subhanAllah. He, uh, he had to go abroad to marry her, subhanAllah. He was so happy when I saw him at his walima and uh, I didn't go to the nikah because the nikah was abroad. But when he had the walima here in London, Ya Allah, he had this glow on his face and I was teasing him. I was like, ah, you see, look at you now. Khalas, you're gonna forget about us, subhanAllah. You're gonna just gonna be you and a wife you now, subhanAllah. He was so happy. Allah, look, look at that. When you have tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us, you, the, possibility, the possibilities are endless. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. And just uh, yesterday, I found out that uh, that they that his wife gave birth uh, to a, a baby girl. Uh, Allahumma barik, Subhanallah. Um, yeah, listen. Place your talk on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Don't limit yourself to these hardcore specifications. Like he's got to, he's got to be like this, you know. Yes, find someone you're attracted to. You have to be attracted to someone. Find someone who fears Allah. Find, uh, find someone who has empathy, who has a beautiful character, not just towards you, but towards their family. SubhanAllah. Uh, but like, don't limit yourself to the world, uh, worldly things too much. Like, oh, he's got to be rich. He's got to have this. Allah is a razak. He's the one who feeds you. SubhanAllah. Oh, you know, she's, she's got to be like, you know, she's got to give me a hundred babies or whatever. Listen, Allah SWT is the one who gives shifa. Subhanallah. Okay, so don't limit yourself to things that, that and then the shaitan, is, uh, the shaitan will manipulate you. Subhanallah. Don't have insecurities about your your body. Uh, will you size up? Will you be enough for your spouse? Allah will give you that. Have to work in Him. And don't worry about your body, your finances. Allah will provide one million 
times infinity percent, subhanAllah, if that even makes sense. Uh, I wanted to make this video to give you some hope. Uh, inshallah, make dua for me as well that Allah grants me shifa because right now, realistically, I, I, as much as I want to get married, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 35, I, ju I just turned 35 very recently, subhanAllah. Uh, yani, if Allah will bless me with a woman who is kind enough to give me a, give me a shot, you know, and I, I don't really have much money, subhanAllah, uh, because Allah does say in Surah An-Nur, He would, you know, uh, He would increase you on in risk through marriage. And if a woman has that sort of tawakkul, that'd be awesome. But still, at the same time, I'll have to work on Allah SWT. I'll have sabr. If it's meant to be in this life, it will be. If it's meant to be in the afterlife, it will be then. But Alhamdulillah, it's all good. Um, so, and also make dua that I make more videos. I want to see if I can make a video once every two days. Allah knows best. I uh, just got to put together some topics, inshallah. And I hope you find benefit. And I hope you found benefit in this video. Inshallah, please make dua for your brothers and sisters in Islam. Always remember Allah in everything you do. Remember Allah is watching, He's closer to you than your jugular vein. Put your insecurities aside. SubhanAllah, that's the shaitan. Yeah, you're just giving ammunition to the shaitan to do waswasa in your heart. Uh, and have just full tawakkul in Allah SWT. Uh, Allah, Wallah al Azim, Allah is, is uh, SubhanAllah, He's not stingy with His uh, mercy. SubhanAllah, there's nothing and no one more merciful than Him. Uh, Azza wa Jal. Uh, subhanallah and he, he, he even says subhanallah that anyone who puts their hand up and, and asks him for something yeah, and he would never yeah, and he reject that person a sincere dua is never rejected subhanallah it's just up to him whether he gives it to you in this life or the next but just know your answer will be your, your duas will be answered a sincere dua will be answered and that's Allah's promise alhamdulillah khalas I think we've reached about over 20 minutes I don't know who stayed who, whoever stayed until the end of this video May Allah bless you for your patience. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khair. This is your brother Anwar Ali on Conscious Reminders. Have a lovely day inshallah. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.